Hi, Mark. Hello, Isabel. <laughs> so, Mark, everyone wants to know, how did you meet Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street? Jordan was hired by the firm where I uh, did most of my business, which was a, a company, it was a very well-run company, big, uh, L.F. Rothschild Unterberg Tobin. It was an investment bank on 52nd Street and 5th Avenue in Manhattan, although they were a global firm. And Jordan was hired as a trainee. I had already been pretty established for about five years. Mm -hmm. And so I met him as he was being hired. And were you guys close? Well, when I first met him, I'd have to say that um, he was a little bit different than most guys. How so? You know, he was more aggressive. He was sharp. I could see that. And I, and I believe that, um, you know, pr we hit it off pretty much right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And what was Jordan like when you met him? You know, Jordy was, he reminded me a bit of myself, I've said that, mm -hmm. in that he was a Queens guy, I'm a Brooklyn guy, I, I was a couple of years older, but he was a very aggressive, ambitious guy, as I was. Mm -hmm. And so Still we are. Have, so I always will be, and I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm certainly not 25 anymore, but uh, Jordan was entrepreneurial like I was, mm -hmm. and he also was looking to true, to rise as high as possible. And what was your business background prior to meeting Jordan? My background, uh, I come from a my father, we in family business mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Uh, it was a very famous, actually, nightclub catering hall for mm -hmm. years. So I, uh, you know, I have an entrepreneurial background, family business. But for me, we were, uh, you know, always education was very important in my family. Went to Boston University and poly prep graduate in Brooklyn. It's a pretty fa famous school. Eight year man, and my <laughs> brothers and myself. We loved poly. Poly was great for us. We were good athletes in school and mm -hmm. good academics too. So, how did you become a millionaire? You know, I certainly didn't set out thinking I was going to become one so quickly, mm -hmm. but it was really the timing and the nature of the business. I had studied, uh, I, I got an MBA at St. John's in marketing and sales. I saw sales as a way for me. Um, and this whole system of telemarketing to wealthy individuals around the country appealed to me greatly. I took to it, I studied it intently, and I, I did extremely well at it. I was very proud of it. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Right off the bat, I had a very big business. So, Mark, what did you spend your millions on? You know, I lived a very good life. I mean, we were lucky. Of course, beautiful homes and cars, the usual things. I tried kind not to be, you know, the best Ferraris, Porsches, never anything but a foreign car, unfortunately. I didn't buy a USA. But I, you know, did a lot of that. We lived well. Did you have Nothing. crazy parties? Crazy parties. For me, I had parties, sure. Sure. And, um, you know, there were separate times between the wives and the groups like mm -hmm. that, and sometimes the boys would go out. So, there so were, were there strippers and hookers when you and Jordan went out? <laughs> you know, there were a couple of times we went to some of these strippers. Thousand dollar, thousand dollar an hour. You know, the they talk about these S, these thousand dollar an hour girls, and I'll never forget, I was on Wall Street for a couple of years, and a very big salesman, which is what we all looked up to, these million dollar producers, called me over, and we started talking, and the, the subject of these girls came up, mm -hmm. and he says, these girls are a thousand dollars an hour, I want to introduce you to these things, and you're interested? And I said, I didn't know. And, I ended up doing it. Yeah, duh. <laughs> I later on introduced Jordan and the guys to all these Gina's girls who were in the movie, which became a pretty big thing for all these guys, mm -hmm. all earning and using these escorts. Yes, that was at all hours, middle of the day. Craig, you know, I mean, was it done on occasion, certain times, middle of the day? Yeah. You know, I can only speak for myself. I was a little bit different than others. I was a. Uh, a bit removed when I was with Jordan, I was a kind of above to some extent. Jordan looked up to me a bit. I'm a couple of years older and I was an established salesman and I was doing exceptionally well. I had a million dollar business for years. When I came to Jordan 
and he was opening a brokerage house on Long Island, I was going to be his 50-50 partner and have the office in Manhattan. Mm. I ultimately bought into his firm on Long Island, and I bought 25%. And we went that way for several months, and I stayed for two years. Made a lot of them. Were you and Jordan doing pump and dump? You know, that's a, that's a term for me they use often now. Mm -hmm. And it's always associated with some boiler room mm -hmm. or some. But in reality, I mean, technically you can say that some of it was pump and dump. But to me, that goes on on every level of mm -hmm. Wall Street. It's a simplistic term, and it, can, it is not properly used very often. Mm -hmm. So how do I sell stock? What sales techniques can make uh, me rich? That's an entire course we teach mm -hmm. and there are secrets no Maybe doubt. Maybe you should teach it. I'm going to. Out of prison? Come I on. did it. My, Give back. I've taught and I do that now. You know one of the things for me it's not only teaching stockbrokers which we can do very well it's anything in sales. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you know when you get in trouble as we did people perceive everything you did was bad. Mm -hmm, of and course. that's not true. For me there was so much good and there were so many things I learned that I utilize to this day. So tell me, why did you go to prison? Uh, it was a horrible situation, there's no doubt about that. It was a traumatic yeah, nightmare, and it, it, I have many regrets. How long were you in prison? Four and a half years. Four and a half years, federal prison. Several different prisons. I, I was, but, um, and what was prison like for you, because you sit here so... Confident and yeah. healthy, and it must have been quite damaging. But the experience, not just the prison itself, the entire experience mm -hmm. is, is a hell. It's like having a, I used to equate it to having cancer because it's something you get and you just can't get rid of it, mm -hmm. you know. And I have been used to, if I have a problem, deal with it, get, get it through it. But when I was ultimately indicted, it was, it was horrifying to me. Uh, you know, I'm an MBA. I did not go out with intent to steal, and uh, I never did. Got caught up in things. We traded in such a fashion that the government, the indictment was a technical one for mm -hmm. me, saying pretty much that we uh, engage in a scheme to enrich ourselves in trading. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt we were trading properly, but obviously I had to come to terms with that. I pled guilty. Hi, I'm Isabel Dungan and I'm here with Mark Hanna. If you'd like to tune into his radio show, Mark Hanna's World, go to nytalkradio.net. Hey, Mark. Yes, Isabel. You like speaking publicly, don't you? Uh, well, I've, I've had to do it in my career for years, and I still do. Yes, it's important, it's necessary. Well, viewers, Mark is available for speaking engagements. If you would like to contact his agent, you can email him at wesleyleeallen at aol.com. Good idea.